Okay. Okay, guys, so I'm starting now. I'm sorry, it took me four minutes to get on here. I've had so much spiritual warfare, it's crazy just preparing for this. Um, so I'm really, really excited, though, to just get on here and tell you guys everything that God has shown me and taught me about deliverance. Because when I came into this, I did not know anything about deliverance when I first came to the Lord. So um, I'm just so excited to share um, what God has done and how deliverance has changed my life. And um, yeah, so I just want to say hello to you guys and take a minute before I get into it. Um, Jeremiah, nice to see you. Osvaldo, hello. I've seen you here before. Kelly. Greetings. Tommy, I made it. Hello. Daniel, deliverance is in the movie. The banjo's playing and all. What do you mean the banjo's playing? <laughs> what does that mean? Do you know what that means, honey? Banjos? No, I have no idea. Okay. Can anybody tell me what that means? Jackie, are you planning coming back to Colombia? Yes. Eventually I will. I will come back to Colombia. Um where are you from, Faber? Where are you from? Are you, are you from Colombia? God bless you guys. Hi, Bernardo. Hi, Andrew. Uh, never seen the movie Deliverance. I've never seen the movie Deliverance. Okay, but we watched at some point, and I actually regretted it because I did not know what I was going to watch. But we watched this one movie about deliverance and it was like a Catholic movie, which the Catholic way of doing deliverance, y'all, is totally different from what biblical deliverance is. And, um, oh, was, yeah, no, but I, I'm not going to promote the movie. Um, so basically, if you guys don't know, I was raised Catholic, Roman Catholic, by two Roman Catholics going all the way down. OK, I went to a Catholic school. I went to church three times, I was involved in the church three times a week. Um, and I am now a uh, Protestant, you know, you know, I'm Christian, non-denominational for you guys that, that didn't know. So, uh, so the biblical way of deliverance is all, all it's all right here. It's all right here. I mean, you, you don't need to go past this. Um, the Holy spirit will show you and, um, he's the one that does deliverance, right? I don't do deliverance. We don't do deliverance, but Jesus does deliverance. Okay. And what happened last time that we did the live, I was just amazed. Like it brought so much praise out of my heart for the Lord, because I was just like, wow, God, like you deliver these people. And we were seeing so many people being like, you know, um, you know, things were coming out and, you know, they were throwing up and everything. So really, really cool. But if you watch anything like the exorcist, it is that is not deliverance, boo. That is so not deliverance. Um, so, uh, praise God. I was delivered from cancer spirits. That was from a generational curse. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. God is still deliverer today. And we're going to talk about through scripture, how deliverance is for today. Okay. Cause a lot of people are like deliverance is for yesterday. It was for the apostles only. Well, we're going to use scripture and we're going to debunk all these lies and we're going to explain how can a Christian have a demon, um, not be possessed by a demon because they cannot be possessed, but they can be influenced or, or oppressed by a demon through opening doors to different things. Right. Uh, Jackie, could you please pray for me? And, uh, please wait, could you pray for me please? And Andres to God, show me if he's my husband, Abby, um, girl, I've been where you are, girl. And we're going to start in a second, okay? Uh, I'm waiting for my husband to come here. But uh, I, I do want to just connect with you guys for a second. So, Abby, please watch my video. I thought God told me who my husband was in college. Um, so powerful, y'all. Um, that testimony, uh, it literally almost broke me. But, um, Abby, let's pray. Let's pray right now. Uh, cause we want you to know, right. And God, listen for anybody that says that God does not have a say in who you marry. That's like the second most important thing. Most important decision that you're going to make in your life is who you're going to marry. Right. 
and God doesn't have a say on it, we should always come to the Lord and seek the Lord. Should we, you know, marry this person? You know, of course, because marrying the wrong person can not only stop your purpose, it can stunt your purpose, stunt your calling. They can keep you back from all of that, but also can lead you into so much trauma and they, they won't accept you for who you are in Christ, whatever you're unequally yoked. So here's my husband, um, Lance, as you guys know, Lance Van Tyne. So uh, let's pray for you, Abby. Absolutely. Uh, Father God, we just pray in the name of Jesus for Abby, Lord. We just lift her up to you, Jesus. And I just thank you that you are a God that hears. You are a God that listens. And you are a God that, despite our flaws, you bless us. Father, despite what we've done, you bless us, God. And I just pray, Lord, that you will bring Abby's husband at the right time. I don't know if this man is her husband, Lord. I pray that if he is, my God, that you will give her a confirmation, Lord, give her peace about it. But if he's not, Lord, uh, just make it very, very clear to her, Father God. I just pray that you guard her heart with just a shield of protection, Jesus, that she won't be led astray by her feelings or deceive, Lord. But my God, that... Uh, that you will just give her heightened discernment, prudence, and wisdom as she deals with this situation, tries to figure this out um, with you, God, and um, just bring that right man into her life. In Jesus' name, Father God, and I just trust you with her. I just trust you, Jesus, that you're going to do this. You're going to give her an answer, and, and she's not going to wait for nothing, right? In Jesus' name, Lord God, I bless her, and I plead the blood of Jesus over Abby. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Abby, God's definitely going to answer that prayer. Okay. God answers prayer. And um, yeah, so God definitely has a say in who you marry, but you have to be careful not to go to signs. So anyways, let's get into it, guys. Um, So I wanted to get first into a teaching. I want to go straight to the scriptures, y'all, straight to the word of God. Um, So if Jesus, and I'm going to just say this, if Jesus walked through a lot of these churches right now, Baptist churches, non-denominational churches, and he started doing the two things, the two of many different things that he did in his, in his ministry, which was deliverance and healing, they would kick him out. They would kick out Jesus. They would say, Jesus, get out of here. Oh my gosh, that's so, we're so afraid of this. Oh my gosh, deliverance. And I'm going to prove it with scripture. So if you have your Bibles, which y'all should have your Bibles, because it is the sword of the spirit and we are in a spiritual war against an unseen enemy and we need a spiritual weapon, which is the word of God. So we're going to go to Mark 5, 1 through 16, y'all. And this is what I'm talking about. So Jesus with his disciples, okay, they're in a boat and they're going to this island kind of thing. And it says, and they came over unto the other side of the sea. Okay, so they're on a boat. They're coming over into the country of the Gadarenes, Gadarenes, I think, Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, Jesus, when he came out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. So this guy lived in the tombs, okay? He had an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. So this guy, one of the things that we can see from demonic possession, because this is a possession, it's not oppression, but possession is, um, he, you have he, superhuman strength. Okay. This guy was, they put him in chains, the people of this town so many times. And this guy would just break these chains every time. Neither could any man tame him. They couldn't control him. And always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And how many people do we see today cutting themselves? I know that when I was younger in depression, I would cut myself, but that is demonic because demons hate you and they, they want you to hate yourself. Right. And just hurt yourself. Right. 
But this guy was filled with demons and he was cutting himself in these tombs. But when he saw Jesus afar off, this guy, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him. He worshiped him. That's interesting. And cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou son of the most high. So now we're seeing that a person with a spirit, an unclean spirit can speak and the spirit can be speaking through them. How many times probably you've had people come up to you and literally you're walking with the Holy Spirit. You're doing the will of God. You're obedient in Jesus and all this stuff. You're doing everything that God wants you to do. And there's people saying the very things that push those buttons. How could they know? Because just how God has his prophets, the devil has his prophets. And just how God uses people to speak encouragement and, and, and prophecy into your life and truth, the devil has his people, right? And he uses them as his prophets to speak into your life. So demons can speak out of people, okay? How many times mm -hmm. somebody has insulted you and attacked you and you don't even know it, but it's a demon. Crazy. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So he's like, I, I beg of you. He's, this demon is from his guy telling Jesus, I'm begging of you. Please don't torment me. Right? He's Jesus. And this is the God we serve. This is, this is Jesus whom we call friend. Literally, he is, he, demons tremble at his name. Demons tremble at the sight of Jesus. Okay? And a lot of us, we think, okay, God is this God of, you know, mercy and love and, and, and butterflies and rainbows and all this stuff. And yes, he is. He's a wonderful, merciful, kind, giving, loving God, but he's also a God to be feared. He is a God. It says in the Bible that it is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. There is a verse that says, you believe in God. You believe in one God. You do well. You do well. You believe in one God. The demons also believe and they tremble. Right? So if so so somebody that so the demons believe in God. And if and this is the thing, there's a lot of Christians that they believe in God but they disobey God. Right? And there's demons that believe in God and disobey God, right? Cuz they disobey God. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the same thing. What makes you different from a demon? Because they, but we 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 both believe, right? Demons believe in God, and so do Christians. But what makes a true born again Christian? What sets a Christian apart from a demon? Hello, that they obey and love God, right? So it's not just to believe, but it's true belief and true faith. You know, it produces obedience, right? So, anyways. That was a little rabbit trail, but this it's it's getting good, guys. It's getting good. I adjure thee by God, don't torment me. Hold on. And he asked him, Jesus asked the demon. He said, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion. Right? For we are many. So here it's showing that somebody can have many demons. Not just one. Not just two. Legion is many right? And he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country. So this demon was like, please don't send me out. Don't send me to the pit. Don't send me down to hell, please. It, probably because, I mean, I can imagine, right? This isn't the word of God, but I can imagine that the devils ain't going to be happy. The devil ain't going to be happy with this demon getting cast out, right? And missing his assignment with this person. So uh, he's like, don't send me out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding. So Jesus, so when this is all happening with Jesus and this guy that's possessed by a demon, there's over here, a bunch of pigs, right? And they're all feeding and all the devils besought him, right? Begged him saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. So they're like, please send us into the, the animals. So that shows us this is crazy that demons can enter animals. What the heck? That's crazy. But it's true. Uh, and uh, that we and forthwith Jesus gave them leave. 
And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, entered into these pigs. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000. 2,000 demons, guys, in this person. That's crazy. But this is the Bible. This is this this is the truth. There's nothing new under the sun. If people had demons back then, where in scripture does it say that people still don't get demons? And if if Jesus was deliverer and delivered people of demons back then, why is he why did he stop delivering people of demons today? Why would he do that? He didn't. He's still deliverer. This is part of who he is, right? And they that fed the swine fled. So these people that like, there's a, a group of pigs, right? And Jesus just sends all these unclean spirits into the pigs, these demons. And then the, the, the pigs literally fly off, right? And it says right here that they went and they were choked in the sea, right? And the people that fed these pigs were like, whoa, bro, this is crazy. They, they, they fled. They were so afraid. And they told it in the city and in the country. So they're telling everybody, guys, there's this guy that literally like casted all these demons out of this guy. Remember that guy that's at the at, at in the cave that he's like super strong and he's like cutting himself. Remember that guy? Yeah. There's this other guy who literally, you know, cast all these demons into the, the, the pigs I'm taking care of. OK, so he's telling everybody. Now, look what happens. And they went out to see what it was that was done. So all these people are like, wow, this is crazy. So they go and they see and they look at Jesus and they're like, <sighs> and look at what happens. They come to Jesus and see that, see him that was possessed with the devil. So these people all knew this guy that was for years cutting himself in the, in the caves, possessed by demons. And they look at Jesus and they look at this guy, right? And had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. So this guy was in his right mind for the first time. And these people were like, oh my gosh. Right? This guy, like, this is a miracle. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with, uh, oh wait. And, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they saw it and told them how it befell to them was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. Mark 5, 1 through 16. Are you there, honey? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, because there's after, where King, is it? King James Version. Yeah, King James. Mark 5 through 16, 17. Hold on, because I have a good point here. Um, and they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. So these people of all the city saw that Jesus literally delivered somebody of demons to this guy that they knew was possessed for years. And they literally told him to leave. They were like, they were afraid and they were like, mm -hmm. Jesus, get out of here. How? Why? If, if, if this man was delivered, it's a miracle. Look, he's in his right mind. And he's, and you don't have to bind him with chains anymore, guys. So these people of this town, why they're afraid? I'm going to tell you why they're afraid. My my idea, this is just me, not in the Bible. I believe it was the demons in those people that were afraid to be cast out by Jesus. And they told him mm -hmm. to leave. That's good. There's a lot of times people are afraid of deliverance. And, and deliverance is, you know, because it's so unknown and it's because it's like demons. and um, It is kind of like scary to a lot of people. But... Um, you know, it's also demons that are like, you know, in that, in these people that are like, we don't want anything to do with this. Right. Um, and when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. So he wanted to stay with Jesus, right? He was converted. He was, you know, with Jesus. So the two, the two things. Okay. And, and, and like I said, people. Jesus could walk into a church right now, to many churches right now, and start casting out demons and, and healing the sick. And they would tell him he's crazy. They would tell him that's not for today. And they would tell him to leave. It's the, it, Nothing's new under the sun. This is the same thing, right? Now, uh, so let's see. How can a Christian have a demon? 
right? This is the age old question. How can a Christian have a demon? Well, a Christian cannot be possessed by a demon, right? We have a body, we have a soul, and then we have a spirit. So the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. So the spirit wants to do the things of God. The flesh does not. The flesh is against God. The carnal mind is enmity with God. It's a, it's 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 an enemy of God, right? So Mary Magdalene, who was a Christian, who followed Jesus, who was the first person to see him resurrected, right? Was uh, Jesus cast out demons out of her? So Luke 8, 1 through 3, soon after he went on through cities and villages, Jesus, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God, and the 12 were with him, and also some women. So his 12 disciples were with him. He's preaching the gospel to all these like cities, and also some women, right? And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. So they followed Jesus because they had been healed of infirmities. This, I mean, the two things that, literally brought people to believe in Jesus was his signs and wonders. He said, if you don't believe in me, at least believe me because of the works that I do. Deliverance, raising the dead, healing and prophecy, right? The woman at the well. So uh, Mary called Magdalene from whom seven demons had gone out. Jesus delivered her of seven demons. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. So she was a Christian who had a demon, right? At seven demons, actually. Um, so now we are all called to deliverance. All of us, we're all called to deliverance. When we have the Holy Spirit, look, because we can't deliver in and of ourselves. But the Holy Spirit can. And the Holy Spirit lives in us, right? And the Holy Spirit's still delivering today because he's a deliverer. And there's people that need deliverance. So uh, Matthew 10, 7 through 8, Jesus tells the disciples, right? And he tells all of us because it applies to all of us. And as you go preaching, saying the kingdom of God is at hand, right? Heal the sick cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. So cast out demons. Jesus is telling us to cast out demons. And then it says in Mark 16, 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. So these signs follow them that believe, not just the apostles, not, no, them, all of us, anyone who believes, right? These signs shall follow them. They shall cast out demons and speak in new tongues, right? So deliverance and healing was only for the apostles. A lot of people say that. Well, here's a scripture that shows us that, that is absolutely not true. Uh, Luke 9, 49 to 50. John answered, Master. We saw someone casting out demons in your name. So these disciples of his, the 12, right? John comes to him and John's like, Jesus, we saw some people casting out demons in your name. Like kind of like they shouldn't be doing that, right? And we tried to stop him because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, do not stop him. For the one who is not against you is for you. So deliverance, right? And these gifts of the Holy Spirit to do these things are not just for the apostles, but also for believers of Jesus. That includes us. And nowhere in the Bible does it say that the gifts of the Holy Spirit stopped. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that deliverance was just for yesterday. Nowhere in the Bible, nowhere. And we, as we know in Revelation, we cannot add to the word of God because that is, or take away from it because the person that does that, their names will be taken out of the book of life. That's what it says. Uh, so I'm going to just give this over to you, honey. Did you have anything you wanted to add really quick? Um, yeah, I can add some things. Yeah. I was going to 
comment to some of those. Uh, yeah. Yes, I am married to Jackie. Yes. And Stephen, that's a hilarious comment. Awesome comment, though. Thank you. <laughs> right there. Oh. Um, so, yeah, Jackie said a lot. She uh, validated everything through scripture, which is the most important piece, right? We don't want to go um, based upon how many operate the God of their mind. We want to go based upon the God of the word. And when we understand the God of the word and we know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, we're going to trust that what he has said is true. Correct. Uh, the last verse in the book of John, um, we come to find the verse and it says, when Jesus departs, or um, no, I'm sorry, it's not there. The last verse in John, it talks about how Jesus did many things that if it were possible, all the books in the world could not even convey all that he did. And remember, Jesus only lived to be 33. His ministry started at age 30 and it only lasted three years. And that's a remarkable statement. But Jesus even declares to the disciples and before he ascends into heaven to be with the Father, to sit at the right hand, he says, uh, when I leave that, you will do greater works than I have done. Now, if John is conveying that there was so much that the, the gospels here, Matthew, Mark, uh, Luke, and John, uh, only conveyed a sampling of all that he did. If we can come to understand that Jesus said, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we will do greater works than him. That is a phenomenal statement that I don't think a lot of us meditate on because that conveys that all these deliverances that Jesus did, we can in likewise do the same. As a matter of fact, we can do much more than he did, uh, which also demonstrates the humility of Christ. I mean, think about uh, would, a, would a king come down to, to be with a peasant and then say, you can be just as I am and do more than me. Here's the kingdom and actually have the neighboring kingdom as well. No one would do that. Mm -mm. Uh, but Jesus, uh, and maybe we should do a video on this at some point. Jesus's humility is just miraculous. It so is. when focusing on deliverance, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions. Unfortunately, some people are raised within certain denominations. And we need to ask the question, where did denominations come from? Hmm. Is it biblical or scriptural or is it man-made? All denominations are built upon man's original thought on how they interpreted certain parts of scripture. And unfortunately, when people don't go to the word themselves, when, when they allow them to be fully taught by the pastor, the pastor is going to go over certain things. Uh, if you go to, uh, you know, a Calvinist uh, pastor, for example, they're going to overlook the scriptures that do validate we have freedom of the will. Um, you know, even it's even well said that John Calvin, who is the founder of Calvinism, that even today he would not himself be a Calvinist. So unfortunately, many denominations, people are sitting underneath certain uh, doctrines, certain denominations of people. They're not opening their ears to hear what the other brothers and sisters have to say. Uh, what did the Calvinists say? What did the Presbyterians say? What did the Baptists say? What did the Pentecostals say? Because everyone has different um, insight that is appropriate and validated by scripture. Now, unfortunately, there are certain denominations, uh, people within denominations that pervert certain parts of scripture, right? There, we... Um, and I'll give my testimony in a second, but, you know, we believe in deliverance. We believe in demons. We believe in angels. Paul said you will entertain angels even at certain moments without you even being aware of that. We believe in these things. But unfortunately, there are some people that like to put on shows. They they like to say, mm. oh, this is I'm doing deliverance here. And they'll do it before a stage of, of a bunch of people right? They'll, they'll ask for even money or donations before they do it. And unfortunately, this is how also the enemy works. The enemy will take people to do what God actually says is real, but what they will do is they will pervert and twist it and they will put on a show. And the very likelihood of them putting on a show, those who are actually born again, who aren't aware of deliverance and all that, they'll look over and they'll say, yeah, something's messed up there. That is, I'm discerning this is not of God. And they're right. But they take it to the next level, which is exactly what the devil wants to do. Mm. They take it and say, well, because they're putting on a show and it's false and it's fake, therefore, it must not even be real to begin with. That's right. And that's what Satan wants to do. Satan loves to operate this way because the greatest 
ability for the enemy to take down people and to, to take territory is to convince people that he is not there to begin with. When we look and, and we, if we're going about and saying, oh, demons, that's for back then, or no, I don't understand that. Why is it that you feel maybe this rise up when you get angry and you feel like something else is taking over? Mm. Why are you walking with constant anxiety and fear when the scriptures specifically say in Timothy, mm. God has not given yes. you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind? That's right. When we are in habitual states that are contrary to God, we're not talking about stumbles of the flesh, but habitual states, we have to ask the question, there is something greater here. Because that verse in Timothy doesn't say we have not been made fearful. It says we have not been given a spirit of fear. Ooh, so if a spirit. born again believer is mm -hmm. constantly living in fear and anxiety day in, day out, Worried they might lose their life. Worried about their family members maybe dying. Worried they might get sick. Worried they're going to lose a job. Worried people don't like them. And they're always living in this worry. That's not the Holy Spirit. It's not. Because what does the Holy Spirit come to do? He's our advocate, helper, helper. He's our comforter. But the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians are love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So anything that is opposite of the fruits of the Spirit, and it's done in a habitual state, is demonic. God did not make us to be constantly depressed to the point even when we're suicidal. Are we going to have no. discouragements in this life? Yeah. yeah we're going to have discouragements. Of course. But we're not going to be constantly depressed, right? Mm -mm. Are there going to be moments where in the flesh someone might have a, a, a lustful thought? Yeah, that's going to happen. All of us have been there. But if you're constantly thinking about nudity of the other sex or nudity of the same sex, or you're constantly thinking about sex all the time with someone yep. that isn't your spouse, that is a problem. That is demonic. And so, you know, a further question is, so we go back to the denominations and unfortunately denominations are built by man. And some people just sit under it and say, I'm Baptist. And they brag about it. They, it's almost some sort of a pride thing. I'm Baptist. No, I'm not like those Pentecostal uh, preachers over there or whatever it might be. And we need to start seeing that the body of Christ, all of us have different gifts, talents, and abilities. That's right. Not all of us are the head, just as not all of us are the foot. But we can't go anywhere without the feet. We can't make anything without the hands. We can't uh, live without the heartbeat. We can't think and grow on deeper revelations without the mind and the head. All of us have different callings and we need to start seeking unity within the body of Christ. We're not just talking about black, white, Asian, you know, all the ethnicities. That most certainly needs to happen. Um, and there are churches who do that wonderfully, such as uh, the one out in New York, uh, Times Square Church, I believe. Um, but we need to start seeking unity amongst those within denominations. I see so many debates online and just, you know, it's good to discuss certain things on the non-essentials, which means that it doesn't pertain to salvation. On the non-essentials, people can have differences. But we need to start uniting Baptists, Presbyterians, Pentecostals, and learning from each other. Because God doesn't give everything to one person. That's why he blesses certain people with revelations. And you begin to say, oh my goodness, I never saw that before. Mm, right? Because he speaks to us at different times. He does. He'll lead us in certain parts of scripture. Like, hey, listen, buddy, uh, you need to learn about humility here. And so you start learning about humility and then you start sharing it with your friends and whatnot. And they're like, oh my goodness, I never saw humility in that way before. I never saw that, you know, um, you know, love in this way. And, and, and so be it. But one of the great questions then is why in the world, once we're saved, isn't uh, to know the truth, you know, uh, Christ is going to set us free. And if we know the truth, we're free indeed. Doesn't he come to liberate us from sin? Why would he allow a demon to come? And these are all valid questions. And when and remember, we have to remember God is timeless and he knows the best thing to do within every given circumstance. There are times when he knows when to intervene and he, he knows when to refrain from intervention. So That's good. 
that's good. When, well, when we when we understand this, we will see that at the moment someone becomes truly born again by believing Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and putting their soul trust in him for salvation and repenting of their sins, they receive the Holy Spirit. Now, certain people will get instantly delivered from certain things, but there still are struggles, obviously, on a flesh basis. Paul says when he sins, you know, it's no longer him who sins, the spiritual man, but it's it's the fleshly man. And so when we do sin here and there, we're never going to be perfect in this life. We're never going to reach perfection. First John says, he who says that uh, he is without sin is a liar and the truth is not in him. Ecclesiastes says there's not a just man on earth who does good and does not mm. sin. So when we become born again, Okay, we come to uh, be saved from certain things. Sometimes, however, there are certain things that God permits and allows for us to struggle with because it draws us closer to him. If God took everything away like that and he made us perfect, would we go back to him again? Would we really be praising all that God's that God has done? No, we wouldn't. And the validation of this is how quickly do we move on from God's blessing and how quickly do we refrain from speaking about it a week later? Wow. The fact that we're not speaking about those things <laughs> reveals how quickly we move on and we leave God to the side. It's true. So God uses this. He allows it. He's not causing it, but he allows it to draw us closer to him. So the question then is, is how can a Christian and why would a Christian uh, have demons in them? That doesn't make sense. Is God evil for doing that? Isn't he evil? We have the Holy Spirit, though. Shouldn't we be able to be wholly possessed by the Holy Spirit? How can an unclean spirit enter in? Well, we see a, a magnificent passage in 1 Samuel 16. And right before that, we see dialogue with Samuel and Saul in, in chapters prior. And we see this habitual state. Samuel is telling Saul what to do, and Saul is not listening. He's disobeying. Mm -hmm. And Samuel says, I believe in, it, uh, in uh, 1 Samuel 15, he, he tells Saul, uh, you know, Saul said, well, I did this, what God said. You know, I gathered all these things, but we kept some things for ourselves. And Samuel says, God desires obedience rather than sacrifice. So when we go to 1 Samuel 16, we come to find a passage where it says that God's spirit departed from Saul and God sent a tormenting spirit. Now, from the surface level, some people might say, God is evil for doing this. This, this is not good. This is not the loving, perfect, gracious God that I know. Well, when we take a look at uh, an understanding, just as Paul said, our battle is not against flesh, flesh and, and blood, blood, but against principalities, rulers, and authorities of the air. So when we have a fight, it's really not against someone else. It's against principalities, rulers of the air. So when we come to understand that, God sets everything up. In scripture, we see things that happen within the physical realm. Kings are raised up. Kings are brought down, all this. But there are spiritual components behind all of that. So God sets up commandments, not in order to, res uh, to restrain us uh, and to keep us from having fun or whatnot, but in order to protect us. Because the problem is, is when we do sin against God, when we do disobey, and again, there are, there are stumbles and things of the flesh that we don't mean, but if something is habitual, mm. where we see Saul not listening to Samuel, a prophet, multiple times, disobeying, going against God, we open up the door for allowing a demon to come in. And that's why pornography, for example, is so dangerous, mm. right? Uh, in the last video, you heard about Jackie and I's testimonies and regarding yep. that. When you're constantly watching pornography, and God obviously says, don't do that. You are opening up yourself to allowing unclean spirits to come, <coughs> come in and have their way. That's right. Because when Jesus uh, cast out... Uh, the demon, I've forgotten what, uh, it's in the Gospels. I forgot exactly which story. Uh, he's talking about how when the demon is cast out, it goes into dry and desolate places, seeking rest, but finding none. Mm. So since it can't find rest, Jesus proceeds in saying, it then says to itself, I shall go back to the home 
my house right. from which I came and bring it brings seven more stronger evil. Uh, evil spirits with it. Yep. So I'm trying to to make this all understandable. We see in that scripture that that demon uh, associates our body as its house, as a legal right, as its mm -hmm. place of residing. And so when we open up the door to pornography and habitual states of sin, maybe we're constantly um, cursing the name of Jesus, um, or maybe we're um, constantly in rage mode. Maybe we're constantly prideful and narcissistic about who we are. We think we're just almighty. The more we are in these habitual states, we open up the door for the enemy to come and dwell within our temples. So what is a temple? Well, we know temples can house many different people. And when we're born again, we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dominates us. He does. He, he possesses us. We can't, as Jackie said, we cannot be possessed by demons. But if you are born again, and then you are, let's say you're waiting for a spouse, and then you just say, get tired, and so you go off and marry someone, and then you're constantly Ooh. having sex with them, you are opening up the door to certain demons entering in. in. Because the Holy Spirit, obviously, he could stop you from doing that. Yep. But we are given libertarian freedom of the will, which simply means we have the ability to choose right or wrong, good or evil. So when we do open up these doors, demons can come in. And how can they dwell when the Holy Spirit is there? Why, why does God allow demons to enter in? The same reason why God allows us to disobey him. Free will. Yes, when we disobey with our free will, they come to live in. And so the Holy Spirit may, uh, you know, he, he rules and reigns when we're born again. He has uh, uh, dominion, so to speak. But there are certain rooms, there are certain seats within our temple hmm. that the Holy Spirit, we have not allowed him to occupy. Ooh. We have not fully repented of wow. our anger and rage. We have not fully repented. Wow of our lack in faith and trust in God and trying to do things our own way. We have not repented of the times we have gone back so to Egypt. We have wow. gone back to see the mechanisms of seek the mechanisms of men, the wisdom of men. We've said, God, you're taking too long. I'm just going to do it myself. And what happens when we do it ourselves? Mm. it always ends in ruin. It does. So that That's is... Me. That we need to come to understand that is why when we're born again, unclean spirits can enter in right. because we are the ones who are opening up the doors. And obviously we see in the book of Job, Satan had to go before God before uh, doing what he did to Job yep. and God permitted. Mm. So God never allows this to happen except seeing only the greater good that will come out of it. Because he works evil out for a greater good. God doesn't want to do this. And that's exactly why he sets up commandments in the first place for us to obey. Again, there is a difference between a stumble in the flesh and a habitual state of sin. So hopefully this can kind of give a little uh, conceptual understanding of why demons can enter into Christians. Jackie brought up the brilliant point, Mary Magdalene. You know, she's walking with Jesus, and another time she has to get delivered while walking with him. And if you if you search from Genesis to Revelation, you will find absolutely nothing that says that a born-again believer cannot uh, have a demon enter into them. There's nothing that conveys that anywhere in Scripture. That's right. So we need to be on guard. We need to be putting on the armor, right? That's why we need to put on the armor secured by the belt of truth with the shield of faith and the sword of truth, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. We need to put all that on because if we don't have that on and we're not staying in the word of God continually, we're not speaking and praying to God continually, we are allowing chinks to happen within our armor. Right. And those chinks, we know, you know, it's a famous, how many angels can dance on, uh, you know, a, a pin, uh, <laughs> They live in a different dimension, so that is many, many can, right? If we have a little chink in our armor, a demon can go in there, no problem. Mm. So uh, hopefully that provides a little bit of insight, and that's why we're here is to, and just so you all know, 
I was raised in a Protestant Baptist home. Didn't hear anything about this at all. I read it in scripture, and because it wasn't illuminated to me, I just read it, and I believed it. I always believed it, but I never understood it. You know, I could, I could, God gave me discernment to know the people on YouTube who were faking it or on television. I'm like, this is just a show. And it, it's right. I'm not going to give true. specific names, but we all can think of some examples. However, God began because I said, God, I just want to understand what your word says. If it's in your word, I know it's true, even if I don't understand it, even if I haven't been taught it. And we know the greatest teacher is the Holy Spirit. That's right. So I encourage you to know that I did not start this way. God began to enter me into this realm and give me understanding because it's in the word. And that is the dangerous thing. Don't put your trust in man who has but breath in his nostrils, as Isaiah says. Don't just sit under the teaching of one man. Go to the scriptures. Say, God, I don't understand this, but Holy Spirit, shine your light on this. Help me to understand because I don't want to live under the banner of a denomination or a, a man. I want to live under your headship and your authority. That's so good, babe. That's so good. Yes. And even in the Bible, like in the Old Testament, it says that God is going to put a new spirit in us and that spirit is going to be our teacher. Like we will have no need that another man teach us. Right. And that doesn't mean that we won't have teachers. Right. Obviously. But the fact is, is that we will ultimately know uh, the truth of things. And Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Right. And he will reveal, you know, things to come, etc. to us. And the Holy, no one, when you're walking so straight with the Holy Spirit, it is really hard for someone to lie to you. It is really hard for someone to deceive you, you know, because you are walking with the spirit of truth and he will speak to you what they're telling lies. Like it's, you get a greater discernment the closer that you are to Jesus because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Like he will literally show you um, who is real and who is not and what, what pastors are real and what pastors are not. And there's a lot of pastors that get up here, right? And they just, you know, they they say that they're like this born again Christian and everything and, the, and they have no flaws, that they don't deal with any sins. And then people look up to them and they say, I can never get there. My spiritual walk can never be like this pastor and they get discouraged. And that's why pastors, they really need to be more authentic. They need to say, Hey, this is what I've dealt with. This is what I've I'm dealing with right now and be honest with their congregation. Right. Because then people start putting them on a pedestal. That's dangerous. It's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's very dangerous. So, um, what was I going to say? Oh, Yes. So the last thing I wanted to say about deliverance before we get into Q&A, right? We'll do Q&A. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, okay. I think some people have questions. Yes, you guys have questions. So prepare your questions for when I finish this last verse. Then we're going to go into questions because I really want to hear what you guys are like thinking, what questions you have, because it's a huge topic, right? So uh, protecting your deliverance. So when you get deliverance, demons can come back in. And this I'm going to show you in scripture right? Demons can come back in if you do not protect your deliverance. So I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit has shown me how to protect your deliverance through the scripture, uh, but I'm going to read it to you first, okay? So Mark 12, 43 to 45. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places or other translations, dry places. It passes through dry places. When it comes out of a person, it goes through dry places. Uh... And it and it it's seeking rest. So the the spirit is seeking rest, but it finds none. Then it says, "I will return to my house, from which I came." House us, right? I will turn to my house from which I came, and when it comes back to that person, right, the house, it finds the house empty swept and put in order. So remember when you're, when Jesus delivers you from demons, it's like a cleansing. That's why you feel lighter, right? Because it's been cleansed. It's empty, right? You're, you're empty now. That's why a lot of people, when they go through deliverance, they feel lighter. Um, 
then it goes, but, but, but when the demon comes back, because the demon, remember, even if you get deliverance, demons are still going to come and try to knock. And you have now so much more strength because it's not over here in your ear oppressing you and influencing you because you cast it out. But it's, it's there, you know, knocking and you have the power now and the strength through Jesus to say no, right? Um, it's like, it's like being with somebody, right? Like you're in a relationship with somebody and, um, the person, uh, you know, you're with them for like a long time and they're really abusive and like, you can't get, you know, out of the relationship because they're so abusive. Right. But then at some point they come and you have already broken up with them. You're good. You're Gucci. And then they come and they knock. You're going to be able to say no to them. Right. But before when you were stuck with them, you know, it was hard to say no and get away from them. But, you know, they're going to knock, but you can, you have the Holy Spirit um, delivering you. So you're able to now say no, right? They're not here. Um, so when the spirit, sorry, I go on tangents, but when the spirit comes back to the person and tries to knock and see if it can come back in, if it finds that the house, the person is empty, swept and, you know, empty, it says in 45, then it goes and brings seven spirits more evil than itself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So also will it be with this evil generation. So basically seven more demons eat more evil than itself literally comes and possesses the person and it gets even worse. Um, so you're worse off than before the deliverance. Um, so you cannot have an empty house. That means you have to fill the house. When you get deliverance, you have to fill your house with what? With the Holy Spirit, with scripture, with um, worship, just filling yourself with the spirit, right? Through worship, through prayer, through reading the scriptures, all of that. And that is how you protect your deliverance. And you don't open the door of your house because we're the house. Don't open the door of your house for demons to come back in. Don't watch pornography again, you know, fight that. If you feel like watching pornography after your deliverance, you have like this, this knocking, right? Open the scriptures, call up a friend. Hey, help me pray for me right now. I'm having so much, have an accountability partner and they'll pray for you. You know, get out of the house, get out of the house, go on a walk. Um, so, uh, that's pretty much all I had for a scripture for the teaching. Um, so let's go into Q and a, okay. And after the Q and a guys, we are going to do a deliverance prayer for you. Okay. And we're going to pray for deliverance. Um, and God is going to deliver tonight. I know that God is going to bring so much deliverance and break chains for you guys. If you're dealing with pornography, anger, hatred, uh, cussing, whatever it is, suicide, um, suicidal thoughts, depression, uh, alcoholism, whatever it is, God will set you free tonight. I really, really believe that. So let's get into Q and a guys. Um, I want to see here. Do demons have the power to deceive angels or was Satan the only one capable of doing that? Do demons have the power to deceive angels? Well, demons are angels, right? Demons are, uh, so you're saying like, can demons like deceive angels? I would say no, because the thing is, look, the angels that have not, that because the devil, right? When he became the, you know, the devil, Satan, he turned from Lucifer to Satan. He convinced one third of the angels and then they were all cast out from heaven and they became demons and distorted and ugly and evil and wicked and all this stuff, right? But two thirds of the angels stayed with God and you'd think, okay, but what if one of those angels decides to, you know, become a demon, you know, and go to the dark side? Well, they wouldn't because when one third of the angels were deceived by Lucifer, what happened? You know, they were cast out and they were distorted and they, they they're now sentenced to 
eternal fire. And they didn't know that that was going to happen. They just thought that because Lucifer was like, hey, you know, lying to them. Oh, you're, we're going to ascend above the stars of heaven and and above God and da da da. And he lied and deceived them. So, yeah, um, these other angels, the two thirds that didn't go with Satan, they're like, wow, we know their end. They're going to the lake of fire for all eternity. That's their fate. And we don't want to go there. So they wouldn't do that. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers the question. That's the best way I can answer that. Um, okay. Let me see. I don't want to miss anybody here. I really just want to get all of you guys. I really want to just, I wish I had all the time in the world. Okay. Mm, yeah. I don't know how to uh, pronounce your name. Amin Tay. I'm still thinking of weed, even though I've stopped for three months now. I don't know if it's okay to smoke again or try it again. It used to help me with pain and gave me motivation. I just want to do the right thing. Okay, so I'm going to make a video about this, okay? But I used to work at a medical marijuana dispensary. Shocking, right? I used to sell marijuana legally. I used to, if you know my my story, you know that I was highly addicted to marijuana. Um, people say you can't get physically addicted. Well, you can get very mentally addicted to it. And uh, working uh, at this medical marijuana dispensary, I learned a lot, guys, a lot about um, the anatomy of the plant, the differences of THC and CBD. So I'm just going to say this, okay? Uh, I mean, um, People say, how, how could weed be a sin, right? Well, look at the fruit. Look at the fruit of something and you'll see if it's a sin. We look at the consumption of THC and I'm not talking about CBD because CBD is fine. And actually you can get all the benefits of the marijuana plant for healing, right? Like creams and stuff. I have CBD cream for my husband that I use on his neck it doesn't make you high. It doesn't give you an altered state of mind, right? And the Bible tells you, do not um, be sober-minded for the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom we may devour. You are in an altered state of mind. You're not in control and you bring, you open the door for demons to come and influence you. Um, so basically look at the fruit of marijuana. Laziness, not everybody has the same symptoms, but this is like kind of like, you know, basic, general. Laziness, sloth, which is a sin in the Bible. Uh, gluttony, munchies, okay, overeating, way overeating and not eating healthy necessarily because you're high. Um, let's see. Uh, paranoia, fear. Um, and that's not from the Lord. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love and a sound mind. Uh, so all of these things, right? And so I would say, I mean, you know, seek, if you are having pain, uh, seek CBD, right? Uh, for healing um, and stay away from the THC because uh, you get an altered state of mind. It's just not, it's not from the Lord. The Lord doesn't want that. Uh, and he tells us to be sober minded. So yes, smoking weed is a sin um, and in taking THC is a sin. Uh, but God did create the plant. God also created cocaine, right? But he did not create it to be consumed that way. If that makes sense. Um, people were dying from it. So anyways, um, okay. Lance spoke of discernment and the Holy Spirit. I've been an atheist all of my life. This is Seba fault. I've been an atheist all my life, but discernment led me here and to Jesus. How can I have strong discernment, but yet I feel that I lack the Holy Spirit? Did you want to say something about that, honey? Or I mean, I can, yeah. Um, well, how can I have strong discernment? Uh, so the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us discernment. Now yeah. there's... there's there's two types of discernment. There's kind of like a um, environmental discernment where you can read your surroundings, kind of see, just kind of like monitor people, see what they're about. And then there's also the discerning of spirits, which is in 1 Corinthians 12, I think 10 specifically. 
uh, which is you're able to basically see uh, certain demons in people through their eyes. Now, God will give um, this spiritual gift from the Holy Spirit to be able to um, to discern this. And, and he chooses to reveal uh, who has what. Um, sometimes he won't reveal certain things to you just to protect that person. But you feel like you have discernment, but you don't feel like you have the Holy Spirit. Well, first and foremost, we do receive the Holy Spirit when we are born again. And there's another question here. What does it mean to be born again? Born again just simply means that it's no longer you living through yourself, but it's God living through you. Christianity is the only religion where uh, a man's God comes to live inside him. It's the only religion where God sends his Holy Spirit to help you along the way with what he commands. So first off, uh, you become born again by saying, Lord Jesus, I believe that you truly are Lord and Savior. I believe that uh, you came into my world and you died on a cross and in three days you rose again and you did so for my sins and you love me. And God, I just repent of my sins. I, I know as your scripture says, we're all sinners. I'm guilty before you. And I just pray that you would forgive me, cleanse me, and that you would just give me your Holy Spirit. And uh, if that prayer is in sincerity, he will do that. Um, and then you go from wondering if you have the Holy Spirit or not. Now, if you are born again, it's important to know that when we walk with God, it doesn't always mean we're going to feel the presence of God. Mm. Because sometimes we become very dependent upon the feeling. And without us knowing, the feeling of God becomes an idol ahead of God. And I know I've had this in my life. There are certain points where I feel God so mightily. He's giving me revelation after revelation. Then all of a sudden, it's almost like it stops. And it's like, God, where are you? And I don't I, I don't feel as in tuned, even though I'm staying in the word during the, these moments. Obviously, there are times when I haven't been in the word. And then I don't feel as close to him. And then that makes me draw closer to him. Um, but just understanding that there are going to be seasons in your Christian life where it doesn't feel like he's there. But if you have him, you need to come to understand this. Faith, faith is not a feeling. We know it's not a feeling. In very simplistic terms, faith is endurance in the truth. If we know him who is truth, it doesn't matter how we feel about the truth. The truth remains as it is. We might not feel God there, even though God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. We may feel unloved and so far from God, but God says uh, that he's willing and ready to forgive us of our sins. He's long-suffering and patient. So discernment does come from the Holy Spirit, but if you are born again and you're not feeling like the Holy Spirit's there, don't be alarmed. You haven't committed the unpardonable sin. The unpardonable sin happens far and few between. Out of like 10 million true born again believers, it might happen to like 60 to 80, maybe. And the unpardonable sin is basically a conscious, deliberate, intentional decision to say, I'm done with this walk. I, I, I'm done with you, God. I, I'm going to live my own way. But even sometimes people out of their frustration will say, I can't do it anymore, God. I'm done. And God knows the heart. He's not going to immediately extract his Holy Spirit. He, he knows that they're just having a rough day or having an emotional outburst. So uh, if you're ever worried you've committed the part, unpardonable sin, you haven't. So just, um, just trust him. You know, there's so much about renewing our minds with scripture. And even asking God, God, give me discernment. You know, maybe you're a business person. Maybe you're trying to figure out where to go to college to. Maybe you're trying to figure out your spouse. Maybe you're trying to figure out how to handle uh, your family. Whatever it might be, God will give you the discernment that's necessary. And so what I would do is, um, you know, if you want to grow more in scripture on discernment, go to something like, uh, I believe it's BibleTopic.com. Or just type, go to Google and type in Bible topic. Click the first website. I believe that's the one. Then type in discernment. You'll get all these verses on discernment. And uh, just kind of take time to meditate on that and pray over it. Just uh, a sober mind. God, give me a sober mind. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One. God, help me. Grow me in the wisdom and knowledge needed. So 
hopefully that answers it in some. Yes, <laughs> that's good, babe. That's really, really good. I always come to Lance with all these like, you know, theological questions because he's really good with just like hitting them on, on the head. And a lot of his videos um, on YouTube, he just talks about such deep topics and like just everyday questions that you might have about the Bible that I'm just like, so I ask him a lot of questions. Um, okay, let me keep going. Were you answering some of the questions? There? Yeah, I was nice. answering some questions here too. Um, okay, Ari here. Uh, how do I know if I need deliverance? I've re recently completed the New Testament and I'm trying so hard to pursue God. And here I am. I still got prescribed to take antidepressants. Mm. Let me tell you something, Ari. I remember one summer um, I took antidepressants because I fell into a deep depression. I, I backslid from the Lord and I went back to drugs. I went back to partying. I went back to dating and I went back to sex outside of marriage and um, all because God didn't give me the man that I thought he was going to give me, um, which shows how much I idolized marriage and put it before God. But Ari, um, you know, what's interesting. Okay. I, I went on antidepressants. They actually made me worse. And, um, I remember, what was it? I was sitting in my car, y'all, and I needed, um, I needed a hundred, no, I, I needed $300 for a bill. And my mom and I, she just came back from, uh, Colombia cause she had a surgery and we didn't have money. So I was literally in a parking lot with no gas and I, I needed to get money for gas. So I needed to have a friend. This is like a few years ago, but I'm like in the car and I have no money. And my birthday's that weekend and everything's going wrong. And I'm just like, and then we have the $300 bill and I'm like, Jesus, I don't know what to do, Lord. Like, I'm just like crying out to him. Like, I'm like, Lord, like, please. And I'm banging on like the steering wheel and I'm God, please help me provide for me. And this is getting to a point, Ari. Uh, but I remember a couple days later, um, this girl from church who I only met one time, she doesn't know anything about my situation. Zero. Okay. We only talked one time and we exchanged numbers. And out of nowhere, she texts me. She's like, Hey, uh, do you have Zell? And she never texts me. I like, I was like, What? So I'm like, yes, but you don't need to send me anything, you know? Like I, I felt bad. And she was like, well, God actually put on my heart to send you money. And I'm like, what? And uh, I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, if the Lord put on your heart, you know, uh, I'll receive it. So she sends me uh, $350. It was more than what I needed. <laughs> God literally provided for me in my moment where I, we couldn't make it. We couldn't, we didn't have the money. And, um, so uh, she's very, very close to God. I mean, this girl spends hours with God. She hears the voice of God so clearly. And she said, Jackie, uh, she prayed for me. I called her. I was crying and thanking her. And she said, Jackie, uh, God's telling me, I just, and I just got the day before, I just got new antidepressant medication to try to try this one because it wasn't working. The other one was making me worse. So I had it right next to me while I was praying and I hadn't taken it yet. And she said, Jackie, God is telling me, don't take the pills that the doctor gave you. And she doesn't know anything, guys. She doesn't know. She's not even my friend. She did not know anything. And God told her to tell me, do not take that medication. Now, I'm not saying that medication doesn't work for, you know, other people or whatever. For me personally, it made me worse. And um, so uh, what I can say is Ari... I believe that even though some people need medication, I still believe that God can heal you. And we're going to pray for deliverance today. And if you want to stick around, um, we're going to do it probably until like nine. And we're going to pray deliverance over people. And if you want to get deliverance, Ari, I believe God will deliver you. Absolutely. 100%. No questions. Um, so, and I just also want to say, Ari, God really, really cares about where you're at. He cares about how you're feeling. You know, he empathizes with you more than other people. 
you know, people can only empathize to a certain degree, but God, he says he collects our tears in bottles. That's how much he cares about even your tears, you know? So whatever is hurting you right now, whatever you're feeling so hopeless in, God is your hope, you know? And sometimes we put our hopes in man and then, you know, we, we, we we're scared to get our hopes up, but it's because we put our hope in man. But if we put our hope in God, he'll never let you down. Right. So there's hope for you and there's deliverance for you. And God does not want you to be depressed. So I hope that answered your question, sis. Um, seek the Lord on on that question as well. Um, but yes, I would say if you have deliverance chronically, you do need deliverance. Yes. Um Okay, let me keep going here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to miss anything. Did you find some something? Uh, I was reading through. Uh, there's a couple. Um, did you all really get married within four and a half months from meeting each other? Yes, we did. Yep, <laughs> we we did. Um, we did, and and we we felt led from the Holy Spirit to do it. Mm -hmm. And you know, the thing is, is that we already knew we were going to get married like later on, but because we were meeting up and, you know, unfortunately we didn't have sex and nothing with our clothes off, but we were getting to points where it was like a little too much. And, um, we, we did not want to displease the Lord. Right. So why have a long engagement when, um, you're displeasing the Lord the whole time, right? Just get married. It's better to marry than to burn. That's what the Bible says. So, um, Let's see. What do you think about angels among us in human form? Well, the Bible says, uh, you know, entertain strangers. You never know if you're entertaining an angel unaware. So when you see that homeless person, you know, uh, personally, I don't give homeless people money unless I'm led by the Holy Spirit. I will give them food. Uh, if I feel safe, I will get off my car and talk to them or whatever. I think that that's really, really important um, to entertain strangers, right? Because many times in the Old Testament, there were people, you know, and that's in the New Testament, I think, right? I think, I think it is. But in the Old Testament, many people were entertaining strange, uh, angels and they didn't even know it until later. So that's what I think. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. This funny one. What, this one? Yeah. Um, okay, Mr. Sandman, you said, Lance Van Tyne, can you prophesy about my future? Listen, okay, okay, God uses prophecy, right, brother? God uses prophecy, absolutely, but prophecy is not like, a lot of people associate it kind of like with psychics, right? But it, it doesn't always, you're not always seeing the future. Prophecy really is just your God's mouthpiece. And like, if he gives you a message for somebody, you give it out, right? They're like, how did you know that? Could be something that's happening in their life. It, it could be that they need to repent for something in their life. It could be that, um, you know, it could be about something in the future. It could be absolutely, but you don't just, uh, you can't just turn it on. Only God, God is the one that gives you the message and a prophet, a prophet cannot prophesy out of the imagination of their heart, like the Old Testament says. They have to be careful to only speak what the Lord is saying when the Lord wants them to say it. So it's very, very touchy and very, very careful that you have to be with prophecy because you can hurt somebody with false prophecy. So let's see. Hey, how are, how are you all? I have a question. What does it mean when you commit sin, but is filled with the Holy Spirit and the conviction hits you heavy? Whenever I would do the sin, I would feel like Paul. They're asking what it means. Or Hold on, because the phrasing of this question is different. How are you all? Oh, I have a question. What does it mean when you commit sin, but you're filled with the Holy Spirit and the convic conviction hits you heavy? Whenever I would do the sin, I would feel like Paul. I would say, you know, Andrew, if you're not feeling conviction, then algo está pasando. That means something is happening and it's not good. Because conviction of the Holy Spirit is like that little tugging, like, hey, you, you know, don't do this, you know, or hey, you know, that wasn't okay. That wasn't right. That hurt that person. 
hey, there was a better way you could have done this, right? So it's a gentle tugging of the Holy Spirit saying, hey, this this isn't, don't do this, or hey, uh, this wasn't okay. Think of, uh, and I know you girls know what I'm talking about, you getting in some new shoes, like new sandals, and you're walking around and you start getting like a, like it starts hurting and it starts bleeding because they're new shoes, like on your ankle, on the back of your ankle. Well, it's kind of like that. Like you feel like that pain, right? But the longer that you walk, the more that your, your body kind of builds like the scab to protect your skin. So it's like, what is it called? The, the scab that protects your skin kind of like protects you from the pain. So a lot of times we're walking, right? And we're in sin, right? And the Holy Spirit's telling us, don't do this or stop doing this. And eventually, you know, he will give somebody over to a reprobate mind. I don't know that he would give ever any, no, he would never give a born again Christian over to a reprobate mind. But the 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 conviction will start to lessen because the Holy Spirit doesn't want to impose. You know, he's he he doesn't, he can't go against your free will. So he gives you a choice. And Eventually, you don't want to get to the point where you're not hearing conviction, okay? That's, like, not good. So it is a good thing when you have sinned and you feel God's conviction over you. Um, absolutely. It's his tugging, and it means that you're still in the right, you're going in the right direction. Um, let's see. <clears throat> um. Okay, Fernando, I've been Disney for over 16 years, and now I'm back to the path of God. I was baptized when I was six, 13. I went to deep into sin during the time, those years of distance. Should I be baptized again? I would say no. You don't have to be baptized again. However, I've done it. You know, when I backslid from the Lord and I came back, I was baptized again. Um, just because I wanted to, it was just between me and the Lord. Like I wanted to do that. But if you've been baptized, you've been baptized. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. Um, okay. I wonder whether trying to be a good person might be even more easier than drawing a bird flying in sky using two lines. Well, trying to be a good person is hard because you'll never be a good person, right? Um, no one's good. No one's good but the Father. Um, okay. Ooh, this is a good one. How do you deal with each other's shortcomings being married? It's a great question. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I don't have that problem. Well... You have no shortcomings, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's not let's not lie to them now. Oh. It's true. Okay. You know, <laughs> no matter <laughs> no one's perfect. Okay. And you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, kind of like it's gonna happen, okay? Especially if you're living with somebody, or even if you're a roommate with a friend or whatever, it's you're gonna get on each other's nerves at some point, right? But it's really a listening to the Holy Spirit too and being like, okay, I just did this wrong. I just said, I just disrespected my husband, right? In my tone of voice or the fact that I interrupted him, right? When he's speaking or the fact that I, you know, whatever it is, the Holy Spirit being in tune with the Holy Spirit and spending time with him every day will help you to be sensitive to his voice and his little red flags like, hey, that wasn't okay. And, um, you know, praying for yourself. I pray for myself. I pray... Because I've had moments where, you know, because right now I'm pregnant. Um, and so <sighs> moodiness, it's real. It's real. It is real. You have moodiness. So um, anyways, uh, I've prayed for myself because I would be mo moody and I'd be like, Lord, Jesus, help me be the best wife that I can be and be really patient because I don't want to keep saying, you know, coming back and saying I'm sorry, you know, just Lord, help me be patient and all this stuff. And I've gotten a lot better. But it's because of prayer. You got to pray for yourself. Before you pray for other people, I sincerely believe, like, pray for yourself first. Um, 
And praying for your spouse is really, really important. I mean, like, it's kind of like, you know, like in those like shows where you're like, you know, fighting with swords and stuff and da da da. And like, he's back to, we're back to back. And like, you know, like he's, he's got my back. I've got his back. And like all these, like, we're surrounded by all these like things, you know, like maybe, you know, Star Wars or something like that. Like you got all these people and then you're like fighting, ah, but you're like a good team. The devil's always throwing things at us, like both, both of us, right? And so you need to um, have each other's back. And when my husband is freaking out, when he's sad, when he's whatever, I'm his encourager or not only his encourager, but I'm also praying in the background. I'm praying for him. I am going to war for him in the name of Jesus. Like we think this thing is going to happen. Oh my gosh. No, in Jesus name is not in Jesus name. We're going to pray right now. Like, so praying is so important for yourself, for your spouse and just being humble. If you cannot be like, and when they bring something, Hey, like this hurt you, this hurt me that you did this, not taking as criticism, but just being like, okay, like, let me self-reflect. Okay. I'm so sorry that I hurt you in that way. Like, I did not mean that, but I'm so sorry that I did that, you know, just being humble. Um, that's really, really important. Uh, anything else maybe that you want to say dealing with each other's shortcomings? No, I think, I think those were all good points on. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I mean, we could talk more on that, but I think it's important to answer some of these other questions. Yeah, absolutely. And you covered a ton of it. So. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, here's, oh, okay. I keep thinking these are like questions and then I read it. Okay. Yeah, there are some good other questions. We can go for a little bit before the deliverance session. Yes, absolutely. That'd be nice. Um, and I'm so excited, you know, for y'all to get um deliverance on this because God is just so good. Like he's the one. He's the one. And he just shows up and we're not even worthy of it, but he makes us worthy through his blood. So um Okay. How do you, how do you ask for a spouse? How do you ask for a spouse? No. Uh, yeah. How did you ask for a spouse? Oh, like asking us. Uh, well for me, so, I mean, I only had one other relationship outside of Jackie and I waited 27 years for that. And then I met Jackie at age 28. Um, so I was really waiting on the Lord just for his best. And uh, at some point, um, you know, we and I will delve more into how to know um, basically the one from uh, a counterfeit. Um, but I was praying in such a way as um, just saying, God, First and foremost, I said, God, I want your best. God, I don't want to try to work this out in my own strength. I want a God story. Uh, and as I prayed that, I would pray certain specifics too. And um, I just, I mean, basically I, f I felt what I made for myself were three the three Gs. I wanted her to be godly. I wanted her to be gorgeous. And I wanted her to be a person of growth. Uh, if you pray those three things for your future spouse, you will not in any wise uh, go wrong, especially when you're saying, in God, I want a God story. Because those of you who know our stories, uh, you know, I just went on YouTube randomly one day. I saw one of Jackie's videos when she only had like 1,800 followers, uh, you know, listen to her. She knew the word. She was gorgeous and uh, still is. And so I just went to go find her on Instagram um, and just sent a DM. And from there, we found out we were just 40 minutes away from each other. So God can work in some wonderful ways. And if you have that desire for marriage, God definitely wants to honor that. Uh, and at the same time, as you're praying that, make sure you're becoming the person that that other person needs to be um, so you can fulfill your role um, well. Uh, because there are God-given roles and responsibilities. One is an inferior to the other, but when we do it God's way, it's the best way. So I would honestly encourage you to just pray for a God story. Give it all over to God. Don't try to go on dating apps. Don't try to uh, weasel your way into certain things. God will do it. He is the creator of all.
He knows what happens even before you know what's going to happen. Yes. Before words on our tongue, he knows it all together. Um, so if he knows all of that, you can trust that God knows the perfect time. And just stay encouraged because uh, you never know when it's going to happen. Uh, you never could know. Be within the next week, it could next be. year, however long. Um, but God has a purpose and plan for you. Yes. Yes. And God is the perfect matchmaker, y'all. Like when I tell you he... Like even to the T, like he, you know, he liked the same music I liked, you know, um, he, I mean, just everything like was to the T. Now there's differences. We have differences. Okay. Like he's an author and honestly, he has to read me his books because I'm not good with reading except the Bible for some reason. I'm just not good. But when he reads me his books, I'm like, oh my gosh, like. This is amazing. Like he's, I love his books. Um, so, but, but he's an author and I've never been really a reader. And, um, so what, what was I going to say? Um, you were just talking about like, like how, how like perfect we are for each other. Yeah. Like he accepts me for who I am. Like when I'm weird, when I'm so, you guys have no idea how weird I am. Like I'm literally the weirdest person the silliest person you've ever met and you would never think it. Um, but he listens to Prince of Egypt uh, ambiance. I, when I, you know, go in the shower or something, sometimes I'll listen to Prince of Egypt ambiance and he did it before too. Just like little things, right? But like the theological big things too. Like that's the main thing, okay? Because you can have little things in common, but you need the main thing to be the main thing that you love Jesus. You're theologically on the same page. Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so yes. Um, yes, Jeremiah Russell, he's written books. Um, one of them that I've been posting a lot, um, because we just finished reading it and it literally changed my perspective on Jesus and it changed my perspective on my walk with Jesus and helped me so much during this time where I felt a lot of rejection from friends and family, uh, due to me doing this ministry um, is the way of the cross. So in a lot of my videos, um, you'll see it. It's like in the description, I, I put the Amazon link, but really short chapters, which I always say that because it's just, I love short chapters because I don't like long chapters because I studied ministry at a university and it was too much. Um, but it just takes you through the process of picking up your cross daily and following Jesus and what that looks like and what people how people will react and how people will treat you and what to expect when you walk with Jesus and just everyday examples with vision, you know, like, like visuals, like you can picture it, you know? So, uh, yes, he does write, um, books and let me see what time it is. We 831. Got, like three more minutes. Three more minutes. Okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. Okay. I want to get to everybody. I really want to get Jackie is pregnant. Yes, Troy. Jackie's pregnant. I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm pregnant right now. So I got a little little baby in the tum tum. Um, so it's three of us here. Well, four of us, including the Holy Spirit. Um okay. Um there was somebody that said something. Uh, up a little bit, maybe right there. Right where, on. where? Oh, do we, okay, so Osvaldo, question for Lance. Do we search for a wife while working ourselves within the Lord, or do we wait until we become full with the Lord? I mean, I can just speak from, like, what I did. Um, basically, again, I just gave it over to God. Uh, and just said, God, I basically said, God, I trust you. And at the right time, I know you're going to show me who the one is. Yes. And at that moment, I will then put forth the work. But until mm. then, I'm going to work on being as best prepared as possible. Yes. So, um, you know, when you're, again, developing yourself, when you're really working on your relationship with the Lord and growing spiritually, and you're trusting in God, when we trust in God, 
that isn't in vain. That's not like trusting in man and maybe man will follow through with a business deal or maybe they'll follow up and text us as they said to hang out or whatever it might be. Man's always going to fail us. But when we truly give it over to the Lord, God is so well pleased. It's like a fresh fragrance, that prayer in his nostrils, as Corinthians talks about. And when we say that, we're revealing our trust in him and we're conveying our heart to him. And in exchange, God is going to do far more than we could ever conjure up on our own. We had talked about in the last video, Proverbs 18 talks about he who finds a wife finds a good thing, obtains favor from the Lord. There's a lot of good options out there. There really are. You could find a good option and it would be a good fit. But if you're wanting God's best, which is a prudent wife, and prudence means someone who's preparing for the future, who's working now so she can be what she needs to be for you later on, speaking from our male perspective, uh, when a woman is doing that, that's a prudent wife. So you really have to pose the question, do I want something that's good and God can work through it? And it will be it will be good. It'll be a good wife, a good marriage, uh, a good life. Or do I want God's best and to be a powerhouse kingdom couple who isn't just talking and just going through the motions and talking about the trivialities of today and who's born again, but just kind of doing whatever because God wants to do far more, far more than we could ever ask or think. And um, so, yeah, I would encourage you, you know, you got to weigh that uh, for yourself. I chose immediately to just say, God, I'm trusting in you for the best. And listen, there were times of waiting. It was very difficult, extremely difficult. I was, uh, I'd get down at times. I'd be like, God, every my other friends are marrying off. What's going on? And and all of this, but the wait was so worth it. I got truly someone who is a crown upon my head, someone who loves God, uh, is 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 the most uh, godly woman that I know, especially in her twenties. Uh, tr- it's amazing what she knows about Scripture, how serious and how she how seriously she loves God, and and how she loves people so well, and has empathy for others, and also her boldness and courage. Many people kind of just, you know, do whatever. You know, they don't want controversy or conflict. Well, if Jesus lived that way, he would have never been crucified. Uh, we, She is so willing to just declare the truth in love, um, but is willing to expose certain things. Because when we are convicted of certain things, we then have the ability to choose whether to act on that or not. And if we do... We're going to save ourselves many trials, much suffering in the future. Because those who sit in what they are, idle by, and their idleness is keeping them from God's best. So I waited on the best. I got the best. I'm sorry, fellas. You can go for the second best. Um, But if you wait on God, he will give you a prudent wife. Just be prepared. Just give it over to God. You're going to have moments where you may be feeling a little discouraged. Maybe you think God has forgotten all of that, but he has not forgotten. Just be at peace and know that whatever we give over to God, God is not only going to take care of, but he's going to absolutely wow us at the end of the day. Yes, he does exceedingly abundant all we ask or think. Um, And I was just... uh, uh, saying right here, uh, pray God. So when I don't feel like praying, I say, God, give me the desire to pray. Cause I don't have it. I'm really, really honest with God. You know, when people were, someone was asking me about, um, you know, my, my morning, you know, I'm not a morning person. So, um, I just, a lot of times just say, good morning, Jesus, you know, I love you. But even sometimes I forget to do that. Cause I'm just not a morning person. I like to talk in the morning. So I'll just have my little tiny little cute little Bible by the bed and I'll have my phone far away from me. Um, But yeah, I'll pray that I'll say, God, give me the desire to pray because I don't have it. And he will give me the desire. It's crazy guys. Prayer really, really works. Um, So why don't we go into the deliverance? So I'm going to just say a quick prayer um, over us really quick. And as I'm praying, I want you guys 
that want deliverance right now, I want you to just focus in on people that you have not forgiven. Okay. Um, if there's people that you've not forgiven, remember that unforgiveness can hinder deliverance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unrepentedness can hinder deliverance. If you're not really repentful, if you don't believe in deliverance, uh, that can hinder it as well. So just being open to hol the Holy Spirit, being open to Jesus as deliverer, uh, during this time is going to be crucial. And also, uh, using this time in the beginning to really say, you know what, Repl reflect on what you've done wrong in your life and see how much God has forgiven you and, you know, choose to forgive and let go of these people that you've not forgiven and give them over to the Lord. Right. So we're going to do that. Uh, and while I pray, just, just have those people in mind and even say a prayer for them. Uh, it's hard to hate somebody or be mad at somebody that you're praying for every day. So when you're not forgiving, pray for them. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put a little worship instrumental for you guys that don't use worship instrumental. That's totally fine. But I always recommend it because it helps with intrusive thoughts. Um, and it just keeps you kind of like, uh, this is prayer mode. This is prayer time. Um, so that's what I use. So I'm just going to pray. Jesus, I just thank you that you're here, Lord, and that you care for every single person, God, that is in this chat, Lord. You care for every single person that's watching this, Jesus, and you want to set them free. You want to break the, the bonds and the chains, Lord, off of them. And I just pray, Jesus, that wherever they are right now, that you will fill their room with your Holy Spirit. You will fill their room with your presence, God, that your presence just touch them. Jesus, that you begin to just shower your love over them, that they just feel this confirmation of love from you, God. Wherever they are, sitting, laying down, standing, I just pray for this person across the screen from me, Lord, that they will receive your deliverance, God, that you give them an open heart and faith, Lord, I pray, my God, that you bring healing as well for their bodies, for anyone that has pain in their back or pain um, anywhere in their body or sickness. Lord, I pray for healing. I pray, Jesus, that you do this through me because I don't have the power. I don't, I have nothing in me, Lord, to do this, but it's only you, Jesus, that can deliver. And it's only you that can do what only you can do, which is um, set people free. So, Father God, I just pray that you will show up, and I know that you will, God. And I just, Lord, I just thank you for each person that's here, my God. And I pray for the hearts that are broken as well, and I lift them up to you, God. Just heal every broken heart and, and every person that's been gaslit and every person that's been lied to and every person that's been um, hurt, God, um, recently. Just begin to do a work in their heart, Lord. And take away the people that need to be taken away from their lives, Father. In Jesus' name, Lord, we give you this time and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so, so guys, um, let, us, let us really just feel God's presence right now. Just, just relax. Just take a breath and just feel God's presence presence he's with you right now you know god is he's present and and we're just not aware of it but when we just sit there and we're like god is here the atmosphere changes our hearts change so i want you to know right now god loves you if you feel that god has forgotten about you he has not forgotten about you if you feel like man you know, I don't know how I'm going to make the rent, how I'm going to do this. You know, it, God, have you just abandoned me? He has not abandoned you. You are so cared for. He cares for you. And sometimes God comes in at the last moment. You know, and if you've had a friend betray you, if you've had a friend that recently, man, you know, you thought they would be your friend forever, but then they just, they, they did something against you. I want you to know that Jesus, people will fail you, but 
Jesus will never, ever fail you. He is your best friend. He is the one that you can come to no matter what. Okay? He will never, ever, ever leave you. No matter what you've done, you are not too dirty for God. You are not too far gone from God for God to reach you. So, um, so I'm going to lead you guys through a deliverance prayer. Okay. So, um, you're going to repeat after me. Okay. And first, if there's anybody in your heart right now, anybody that you've not forgiven, let them go. Give them to Jesus. Say, Jesus, just repeat after me. Close your eyes and repeat after me. Take a deep breath. And say, Jesus, I let them go. I give them to you now. And I forgive them of the debt they owe me. They don't owe me anything, God. I give that over to you, Lord, and I forgive them. Okay? Now, we're going to go against depression. Okay? That's the first spirit we're going to go against. So you got it. When I, when I tell you, repeat after me, you have to repeat after me and mean the words. Mean everything that you're saying. Okay? So say, in the name of Jesus, I repent, Father, before you for coming into agreement with depression and for having a spirit of heaviness over me and allowing that to control me. Lord, deliver me tonight. I renounce and break every contract I made with the spirit of depression and suicide in the name of Jesus. And I divorce the spirit of, de of uh, depression and suicide right now in Jesus' name. Spirit of depression and suicide, leave me right now in Jesus' name. Okay, now if you said that, I'm going to pray over you. So just look into my eyes, okay? Just zone out into my eyes and tell the spirit of depression and suicide, if you've had suicidal thoughts or attempts, tell them both to leave by name in your head while I'm doing this, okay? Every spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name above all names, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you in Jesus' name, spirit of depression and suicide, come out of this person right now. Come up and out of this person right now in Jesus' name. Up and out. Up and out. And I'm just going to side note. If you, if you feel something, you may feel some pain, pressure, changes in your body, uh, you know, your stomach may start hurting. You may feel like throwing up. You may feel like crying. You may feel like screaming. You may feel like, um, you know, you know, your ears popping, um, yawning, coughing. Those are all the spirits coming out. Okay. So spirit of depression and suicide in the name of Jesus, you will not have this person. You will not overwhelm this person with suicidal thoughts anymore. You will not tell this person they're worthless and nobody loves them. In Jesus' name, that's a lie. And I break off that lie off of them in Jesus' name. I break every word curse spoken over this person in Jesus' mighty name by the blood of Jesus. And I just command every spirit of depression to come up and out of that person in Jesus' name. Every spirit of suicide come up and out of that person in Jesus' name right now. Up and out. Come out of your stomach. Come out of 
the mind, come out of the body, come out of the eyes, come out of the ears in Jesus name, come up and out right now. Come up and out right now in Jesus name. Come out of that person by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus defeats you spirits. The blood of Jesus overcomes you in Jesus name. I cancel every plan of Satan that you have over this person. Spirit of depression and suicide. I cancel every plan of Satan over this person. I command you to evict your assignment in Jesus name. Leave. Leave right now. Come out of the throat. Come out of the mouth right now. Come out of the mouth, both of you. In Jesus' name, and every spirit that you brought with you, come out. I bind you, spirit of depression and suicide, and I command you to come out by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by his shed blood on the cross. In Jesus' name, come out. Self-hate. Self-hate? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. If you are, and, and if you're still, if you're feeling like you're, you know, these, Spirits are still coming out. Just continue to tell them to come out. You can say, come out of me in Jesus' name. Come out of me. So just continue, okay? You can tell them to leave and they'll leave. Um, and if not, if, if you know, and also that, but watch this video when it's posted and rewatch it again, okay? This part where I'm praying and you can still keep going with this, okay? Uh, Spirit of self-hate. So repeat after me if you've had self-hatred in your heart, okay? And we're going to do it along with murder because if you've hated your brother, you have murdered him in your heart. That's what the Bible says. So um, any hatred for others or yourself. So repeat after me and say, I break every contract and agreement and close every door that I open to the spirit of self-hatred and murder. I repent of hatred right now in Jesus' name. And I command you spirits to leave me now in Jesus' name. I don't want you anymore. Okay. Now just look at me. I'm going to pray over you. Every spirit of self-hatred and murder... I bind you in Jesus' name. And I command you to come out of that person in Jesus' name. I command you by the blood of Jesus to come out. Out of the stomach, out of the throat, out of the mind, out of the eyes, out, out, out in Jesus' name. Come up and out, up and out, out of the mouth right now. Come out of that person right now. Come out of that person right now. Up and out. Self-hatred, come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name right now. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out. You are not going to keep this person captive anymore. You are not going to have them be angry towards people anymore and hate people made in the image of God. Come up and out right now in Jesus' name. For God is a father slow to anger. Come up and out. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Come up and out, murder. Come up and out, self-hatred. In Jesus' name, up and out. Up and out. Okay. Uh, Ahab. 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 Spirit of people pleasing. It's okay. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. If there is a spirit, um, if and continue to tell that spirit if it's if you're not done yet to leave. Okay. Until you feel it's time to move on. You feel peace. But um, there's a spirit of Ahab. So Ahab was the, the husband of Jezebel. Okay. And he just did everything his wife told him to. Um, he was emasculated by her. And he just people pleased and just submitted to her. So uh, if you've been controlled by a woman. Or if you just submit to abuse or you submit to just everybody and what they want, and you you never stand up for yourself, um, you have the fear of man, and you, you um, all of that. So if you have that, you may have the spirit of Ahab. So we're just going to try and get that out of you. Debbie, you just vomited it out. Hallelujah. Praise the Praise Lord. Lord. Yeah. Adrian, it worked. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. God is so good. Yes, guys, please, um, please put, um, what God is doing, you know, how he's delivering you, your symptoms in there. Um, you know, because that's, that's the testament of the Holy spirit and his power. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, the power of the name of Jesus, the power of the name of Jesus demons mm -hmm. flee. So, uh, what, what spirit are we doing right now, honey? Ahab. Ahab. Yep. Okay. So repeat after me. If you believe you have the spirit of Ahab, I, and remember, you have to mean this, okay? You have to tell these spirits to leave. You don't want them, okay? Say, I renounce and break every contract I made with the spirit of Ahab. I close every door I open to the spirit of Ahab. And I renounce Ahab right now in Jesus' name. Spirit of Ahab, leave me. I don't want you anymore. In the name of Jesus. Okay. So now I'm going to pray over you. Look at me in the eyes and just zone out on my eyes, okay? Every spirit of Ahab in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of this person right now. I bind you, spirit of Ahab. And I command you to come out of this person in the name of Jesus. Ahab, come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Out of the stomach. Out of the body. Out of the mind. I break off your hands. I tear down your throne in Jesus' name. And I command you to bow down to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus Christ. Come up and out right now. Up and out, spirit of Ahab. In the name of Jesus, I bind you and your kingdoms and I command you to come up and out, Ahab. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of the heart. Come out. In Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus right now. By the blood of Jesus, come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. In Jesus' name. Come out. In Jesus' name, right now, come out in the name of Jesus. Up and out, up and out. Okay. Uh, bitterness. Bitterness? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, if you have bitterness in your heart, okay. Uh, someone's chest hurts. Yeah. Know, they have a little more. Or? Okay, yeah, maybe a little bit more. Okay. Um. So just, uh. yep. Okay, so if you're... Praise God. Just felt a little lighter. Good, Jack. That's amazing. That's God. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Praise the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to continue to pray over the spirit of Ahab to come out. So keep looking at me. Every spirit of Ahab, come out. And guys, tell that spirit to leave in your mind. Every spirit of Ahab, up and out of that person in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Up and and out of that person in Jesus' name. Up and out of that person in Jesus' name. Your assignment is finished. It is broken. All of your yoke is broken off of this person right now in Jesus' name. Come out. Dylan, praise God. Dylan? Yeah, I read that, yeah. Wow, Dylan. Praise the Lord, Dylan. Praise the Lord. That is so good. God is good. God is moving, guys. Okay. Before bitterness, uh, someone needed uh, blasphemy. Blasphemy. Yeah. Okay, so when you are, um, that, I think that's associated with cursing too, right, Bear? Yeah. Okay, so uh, sometimes, you, you, and you could do self-deliverance, guys, in your own home, okay? The Lord is the one that delivers, so you just have to pray. And he will show up. So doing the same process that I do um, with your mouth, confessing and renouncing those those demons that you've come in agreement with. But um, and repentance, confession is so important. But um, what was I going to say? Blasphemy. blasphemy. So if you curse, if you have blasphemy in your heart, if you know you can't stop cursing, we're going to pray over you right now. So uh, repeat after me. And just uh, say and mean it with your heart. 
I break every contract and agreement that I've made with the spirit of blasphemy and the spirit that causes me to curse in the name of Jesus. I command you out. I bind you. And I don't want you anymore. I close every door I open to you in Jesus' name. Okay. Now just look at me and I'm going to pray over you. Spirit of blasphemy in the name of Jesus. Spirit that causes this person to curse. Come out out of this person right now. Come out of their mouth. Come out of their tongue. Come out of their throat. Come out of their body. Come out of their stomach. Come out blasphemy and cursing in Jesus' name. Up and out of this person by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, come out. By the blood of Jesus, come out. Up and out in Jesus' name. You have no power over that. You are not going to make them the devil's prophet. Come up and out in Jesus' name. You are not going to use their mouth anymore, but God is going to use their mouth. Come up and out right now in Jesus' name. Up and out in Jesus' name right now. Up and out right now. Okay. Uh, I think... I think lust is a big one. Lust is a big right one. Yeah, yeah, I was feeling that. Okay. Yeah. So if you still deal with homosex or not, well, homosexuality is part of that. But if you still deal with homosexuality, lust, perversion, pornography addiction, um, we're going to pray for you right now, guys. And I've had so many people even email me and tell me that they have gotten delivered from uh, pornography from the last live. God did that. So, just with your whole heart, invest it here. Have your faith in Jesus right now that he will deliver you, okay? So right now, repeat after me and mean this, okay? Jesus, I am sorry for watching pornography. I am sorry, Lord, for having sex with those people that I should not have had sex with. I am sorry, Lord, for lusting after people. I am sorry for having um, watched homosexual pornography. In Jesus' name, I break every contract and agreement that I made with the spirits that came in through pornography. Every spirit of perversion, depression, anger, uh, homosexuality, lust, I bind you in Jesus' name and I command you to leave me right now by the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus. Okay. Now look at me, and I'm going to pray over you. You don't have to say anything anymore. Tell the spirits to leave in your mind while I'm doing this, okay? God is going to deliver you. God is going to set you free right now, okay? In the name of Jesus, the name above all names, hallelujah, I command every spirit of lust and every spirit that came in through pornography in the name of Jesus, I bind you by the blood of Jesus, by the word of God. And I command you in Jesus' name to come out of this person right now. Come out of them. I cut your hands off of them in Jesus' name. Come out of their eyes right now. Come out of their eyes right now. Come out of their ears right now. Come out of their minds. Come out of their heart. Come out of their body right now. Come out of their hands Come out of their private parts right now in Jesus' name. Come out of them right now. Up and out. Up and out in Jesus' name. You have no power over them by the blood of Jesus. Come up and out. I cancel your assignments over these 
people, spirit of depression, spirit of suicide, spirit of anger, spirit of perversion, spirit of lust. I command you to come up and out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, by the blood of Jesus, come out. Up and out. Up and out right now. Come out of that stomach right now. Come out of their stomach. Up and out of their stomach. Stop causing them pain in Jesus' name. Up and out. Up and out right now. Up and out in Jesus' name. You will not cause them to watch pornography again. I declare and prophesy that pornography is broken. The power of pornography is broken off of this person in Jesus' name. The power of lust is broken off this person in Jesus' name. They will never watch pornography again. They will never masturbate again. I bind the spirit of, of masturbation in Jesus' name. And I cancel your assignment over this person. I command you to come out of the mouth, out of the hands, out of the body, out of the mind right now in Jesus' name. Come out. You will not control this person by the blood of Jesus. My God, deliver these people right now. Deliver them, my God, completely, Father God. Break the chains and the yokes, my God, in Jesus' name. Every spirit of pornography that came in through pornography come out of this person right now by the blood of Jesus. Uh, rewind. Demir, re rewind. Rewind? Rewind. Thoughts and Rewind thoughts. Okay. And trauma. Okay. So if you watch pornography or tr you've had trauma or there's a spirit like reminding you of what somebody said or embarrassing moments or anything like that, we're going to go through that. Okay. And if you're still coming, things are coming out from the spirit of pornography, tell that spirit just by yourself. Tell that spirit, spirit of pornography. Like ignore me and say, spirit of pornography that came in through pornography, spirit of lust, spirit of perversion, spirit of come out of me in Jesus' name. Come out. They will come out. Okay. God is, God is doing it. So, um, so say, repeat after me, um, every spirit of recall and what is it, baby? Just recall intrusive thoughts, uh, rewind, okay. rewind, rewind every, every spirit of, so repeat after me, every spirit of rewind or recall, I, um, I renounce you. I break every contract and agreement I made with you. And I command you to leave in Jesus' name. I command you and I, I break off your power off of me. You will not torment me anymore. Get out of me in Jesus' name. I don't want you anymore. Now look at me, and I'm going to pray over you. Spirit of recall and spirit of rewind in the name of Jesus. I break off your power by the blood of Jesus off this person, and I command you in Jesus' name to come up and out of this person, come out of their mind, and stop. I command you to be silent because only the Holy Spirit can speak to this person. They are not going to listen to the voice of a stranger. I command you to come up and out. Spirit of rewind and recall. I bind you in your kingdoms and I command you to come out. Come out by the blood of Jesus. Come out of their mind right now. Come out and stop. Release the pressure from their mind right now. Release the pressure from their mind in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out. Every unclean spirit we have named, come out of these people right now. Come out of this person. Come out out by the blood of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus. Uh, good. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, Leviathan. Leviathan. Pride. Pride. Yep. Okay. Honey, do you want to go let my dad know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to do pride, guys. Pride. Pride is a big one. Okay. We all. Yeah. Ask him how he's doing with dinner. 
Okay. I'm going a little over the time, but I don't care. I know that this is really, really important. So pride, pride, we all deal with it to some degree, but there's sometimes where we're so controlled by it. Right. And we need it out. So, um, so in the name of Jesus, we're just going to, we're going to, um, we're going to repent. Right. So close your eyes. If you're dealing with pride, if you've dealt with pride, just close your eyes right now. Okay. And begin to repent before the Lord. By the blood of Jesus, just repent and say, Lord, I am so sorry. I know what you've done for me on the cross. I don't deserve it. And now I want you to repeat after me, Jesus, forgive me of pride against people. Jesus, forgive me for pride against you. Okay. And now say, I break every contract and agreement that I made with the spirit of pride and Leviathan. And I renounce Every agreement, every door I've opened, I close. I renounce every agreement I made with these spirits in Jesus' name. Pride, I command you to leave me right now in Jesus' name. I do not want you anymore. Okay. Now, just look at me. Every spirit of pride... Every spirit of Leviathan that keeps this person from their purpose, that keeps this person from flourishing in their relationships, that keeps this person from being used by God, I command you in Jesus' name to come up and out. Pride, I cut you at the root in Jesus' name. And I prophesy that this person is free of pride in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus. Pride, come up and out right now up and out of this person, out of their stomach, out of their mind, out of their eyes, out of every part you're hiding. In Jesus' name, Leviathan and pride, I bind you by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Come out of them right now. Come out of them by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus right now. Come out. Come out. 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 Out of that mouth. Come out. Come out of the throat. Come out and don't, don't stay in the throat. Don't be stuck in the throat. Come up and out right now. Come out. Come out. Out, pride. Out. Up and out. In Jesus' mighty name. Up and out. Out of the stomach. Out of the mind. Out, out, out. I break off your power. I cancel your assignment over this person. All of your assignments. I cancel them by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Come out, pride, right now. Come out, pride. Up and out, up and out, up and out. Up and out right now. I know we have just a little time left, but uh, referring back, uh, bitterness. Some bitterness? Yeah. Okay. Um, if you've uh, renounced bitterness, okay, um, and if you've not renounced bitterness, we're going to renounce bitterness. Okay, and we're going to tell bitterness to leave. We need to let go, guys. We need to let go of the people that we've, that have hurt us, that have, um, that have uh, hurt us, you know, that, you know, we don't want to let go. We don't want to let go of that pain, but we need to, because Jesus said, if you do not forgive, I will not forgive you. Your heavenly father will not forgive you, right? So, um, so let's, let's pray. Okay. And say, I renounce, repeat after me. I renounce and break every contract and agreement I made with pride. And I repent of pride or not, not pride. I'm sorry. Bitterness, pregnancy brain. Sorry. Uh, I repent and I break every contract and agreement I made with bitterness. And I command bitterness to leave right now in Jesus' name. Up and out. Come out of me, bitterness. 
I bind you and I break off your power off of me in Jesus' name. Okay. Now just look at me. Every spirit of bitterness come out of that person right now. By the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus. Come out of that person that's causing them to not forgive. Come out of that person right now. Come out. Up and out right now. Come up and out right now. Up and out in Jesus' name. Bitterness, I break off your power off this person. I cancel all your assignments off this person by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. And I command you to come out right now. Up and out. Come out. Come out of every part. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out, bitterness. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name right now. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out, bitterness. Up and out right now in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus. Okay. Praise God. Good. Now we're going to do um, one last thing. Right? What did my dad say, honey? He said now? Well, yeah, we have like 10. 10 minutes? Okay. So if you're dealing with a sickness, if you're dealing with pain in your body, okay, we're going to pray against a spirit of infirmity. Okay, anything that you have in your body that you need healing from, we're going to pray right now. And I'm believing God's going to heal you. I'm believing that in Jesus' name. So, so right now, okay, um, we're going to, we're going to renounce every spirit of infirmity. And then I'm going to have you touch the body part that you need healed. And we're going to pray over your body part. Okay. So uh, say, repeat after me. I renounce and break every contract and agreement. I made with the spirit of infirmity. I disagree that I am sick. I am healed and restored in Jesus name. By his stripes. We are healed. Spirit of infirmity, I command you to come out in Jesus' name and leave me. Okay, good. So now just look at me. I'm going to tell the spirit to leave. Every spirit of infirmity that's causing this person pain, causing this person sickness, I rebuke all pain in them in Jesus' name. And sickness, I rebuke all sickness in them. And infirmity, I command you to come out of this person right now in Jesus' name. Up and out. Up and out of this person. Come out of their bloodlines. Come out of them in Jesus' name and stop causing them pain. Up and out infirmity right now. In the name of Jesus, come out of their mouth, come out of their throat. And I prophesy and declare in Jesus' name that this person is healed of their infirmities by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Come out right now. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Up and out, up and out, up and out, spirit of infirmity. Out of the back, out of the spine, out of the shoulders right now, out of the hands, out of the feet. Out, spirit of infirmity. By the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Come out. Stomach, out of the eyes. Come out of the stomach. Come out of the eyes. Come out of the brain. Come out of the mouth. Come out. We rebuke all cancer in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus. We rebuke that in Jesus' name. Come out. Out of the stomach right now. Mm -hmm. Come out of the stomach right now. Up and out. Up and out, up and out, up and out, up and out. Out of the fingers. Out of the fingers, spirit of infirmity, come out of the, the fingers. Come out of the hands. We rebuke all carpal tunnel right now in Jesus' name. We rebuke all arthritis by the blood of Jesus right now. We just declare healing. Mary Bell, you threw up. That is the Lord. He is healing you. He is delivering you. My hand crippled. Okay. In Jesus' name, Lord, we just pray over those hands, my God, for healing right now. Healing and deliverance in Jesus' name. Healing, Lord God. And okay, so now put your hand on your body part. If it's your back, right, Jay? If it's your back, 
wherever it is, if it's your hand, put your hand on it in faith, okay? We're going to pray over it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I just pray that their hand be your hand, my God. Their hand be your hand, Jesus. And by the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I just declare your healing over them. I declare your healing over them. And keep your hand there, okay? In Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus, I command every spirit of infirmity to leave that place right now in Jesus' name. And I command all pain to go from that place. Leave the body. Leave the back. Hand that's crippled. Be made straight in Jesus' name right now. Be made straight. Be made straight. Be made straight in Jesus' name. Back that is hunched over. Be made straight in Jesus' name. Spine that is out of line. We we cancel and we break off and we rebuke all scoliosis in Jesus' name. All scoliosis. Spine, I command you to just realign right now this person's body in Jesus' name. Realign right now. Realign. All pain go. Realign in Jesus' name. Realign in Jesus' name. Realign. Foot, whatever foot is being is hurt right now, just Father, I pray that you heal the bones. Bones, be healed right now in Jesus' name. I command all the bones, the tenants, the muscles in th this body of this person watching me right now to be healed in Jesus' name. All pain go from their body. All pain leave. All of it go in Jesus' name. All of it leave right now. I declare healing in Jesus' name. I declare healing in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus. I believe, my God, you still heal. In Jesus' name, all healing. Reynolds. Reynolds? Reynolds, yeah. Okay, Stephanie. Yeah, circulation, hands and feet. Okay, yeah. cold hands and cold feet. Hands and feet. Okay. okay. I rebuke all Reynolds disease mm -hmm. in Stephanie and anybody else that is here. And I command the bones and the ligaments and the muscles and the blood vessels mm -hmm. to start pumping and to regulate in the hands and the feet right now in Jesus' name and anywhere else in the body it needs. Right now, begin to regulate in Jesus' name and be healed right now. Be healed right now. All Reynolds, we just rebuke that in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus. And we command all pain to go. All pain to go. All pain in the, in the spine leave right now in Jesus' name. All pain in the spine right now leave. Leave in Jesus' name. Leave that person right now. Every spirit causing pain. Leave that person right now in Jesus' name. Leave that person right now in the name of Jesus. Okay. Praise God. Praise the Lord, guys. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. God is so good. God is still a healer today. God is still, you know, and um, sometimes, you know, it's not his timing to, to heal, right? But uh, a lot of times, um, you know, God, it's just, it just depends on the Lord. And you've got to trust the Lord, right? Uh, one more. I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. We go, but tormenting spirit. A tormenting spirit? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And guys, if you felt anything in there, um, you know, changing in your body or anything, Please put it in the comments and give glory to the Lord and share it with everybody um, because we want to praise the Lord with you. Um, okay, torment. Mm -hmm. So every tormenting spirit. So I command every tormenting spirit to come out of this person right now, tormenting them at night, tormenting them during the day at work all the time, telling them that they need to do this and they need to do that and they need to change this about their appearance. I command you to come out of them in Jesus' name, tormenting spirit. Leave them in Jesus' name right now. Leave them in Jesus' name right now. Come out, come out right now. Every tormenting spirit, come out. Every tormenting spirit, come out in Jesus' name. That torment them during night. Every spirit that torments them at night through nightmares, we bind you and we command you to leave in Jesus' name. We break off your power by the blood of Jesus. Right now, come out, tormenting spirit. Come out. Come out of their mind. In Jesus' name, come out. In Jesus' name right now. Good. 
Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Jay, your back feels better. Praise the Lord. God is so good. God is so good. Praise God. Okay. Good, guys. I feel warmth. Good. That's the Holy Spirit. That's so good, Stephanie. You feel warmth? You feel warmth in your hands and your feet? That's so amazing. Praise, Praise the Lord. God. I'm going to be honest. My hands started feeling warm from that. Really? Yeah. He, my husband has Reynolds. No, I, I break, I cancel that in Jesus' name. He does not have Reynolds by the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. But you started feeling warm. I yeah, feel your hands, hands warm. Yeah, they feel, yeah. Wow, Bear. <laughs> like both your hands and your feet? Uh, I don't know about my feet. I, well, they're in socks and, and slippers. Yeah, I can't. I can't say wow. that, my hands definitely as you were praying. Right wow, there. guys. So, I feel lighter, <laughs> feel at peace. Praise I feel Lord. wind moving. Praise the Lord. My whole body feels warm. Come on. Praise God. I feel better and got sweaty. That is the Lord. That is the Lord. He's a consuming fire. So when you feel that warmth, it's it's God. It's his presence. Wow, guys. I feel comforted. So good. Mm, praise the Lord. My gosh, guys. Thank you, Lord. My brain felt a little weird, small headache. From now on, I'm free in Jesus' in mighty name. Praise the Lord. So good. I'm so glad, guys. I'm so glad I had this time with you. I'm so sorry I have to go now. I wish I could stay more and pray for you guys more. But um, we'll definitely be doing a, a live again sometime in the future. I'm not sure when. Uh, but I really, really love you guys so much. And... Um, you know, if I don't get back to your comments, please forgive me. I try to get back to everybody's comments um, as much as I can. And, um, yeah, I really appreciate all of your support. You guys are my family in Christ, um, you know, and and um, I just really appreciate you guys. I really do, and I see you as my family. So, uh, okay, guys, I love you so much. And remember, you can do self-deliverance on yourself. The Lord will deliver you in your room, wherever you are. Um, you just renounce and you break those you break those legal contracts with with uh, the enemy through your mouth. There's power of life and death in the tongue. So in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you guys are awesome. OK, take care and have a beautiful, beautiful night. Much love, guys. Bye bye.